Welcome to Coffee with Kyle number 13. I'm Kyle Ridgway. Good morning. Today I wanted to talk very briefly about considering the role of the physical therapist in acute care in hospitals, um, on the wards, and step-down units, in the intensive care unit. And this is something that I had the pleasure of presenting on um, with my medical ICU team at a combined sections meeting. And we actually talked a little bit about the role of physical therapists in the intensive care unit and kind of moving beyond early mobility to really encompass a broader scope. Whoa. Camera issues, bear with us. Um, and one of the things that I think is important is physical therapists and the acute care have really tied themselves to, um, to two big things, and that's, that's function and, and mobilization, kind of physical function and movement, and discharge planning. And I think both of those things are, are vitally important. I don't want to undersell the value that physical therapists bring in those two realms. Um, Firstly, I think we can go deeper in both of those realms. I think we can actually become more involved in not just discharge planning, but care planning and advanced care planning. Um, and further, I think we can do a better job of not just treating physical function, measuring physical function, um, and intervening on physical function, but prognosticating physical function, tracking physical function, um, outline the trajectory of physical function, both pre-hospitalization and during a hospitalization. I think both of those things are remarkably important. Um, but I think if we move beyond that, we created a kind of a top 10 list when we think about intensive care unit patients of how a physical therapist can intervene and assist with best practice. And that list that I would like people to consider is optimization of wakefulness, appropriate medication profile, delirium screening and intervention, ventilator liberation and failure to liberate, contribute to, contribution to the diagnostic process, functional trajectory and prognostication, care planning and advanced care planning, patient and family engagement, facilitation of nurse-driven or uh, nursing staff-driven mobility, and symptom management. But I think the other thing to think about, um, especially for students, is thinking about Obviously our interventions and our um, tests and measures are at a high level or a kind of a, a larger scale, at the person's scale, are looking at physical function and then we oftentimes drill down into physical impairments or impairments of body structure and function. But the question or the thing that I would leave you to ponder is, can our interventions or even can our involvement in a patient case potentially improve physiologic and medical outcomes? So maybe regardless of physical function, both poor or good, maybe our involvement or our interventions actually help with uh, physiology, actually help with people's either deranged physiology or improve their physiologic outcomes, and thereby maybe actually improve their medical outcomes. So an example I will use is that uh, patients who either have chronic lung disease or an acute lung process, maybe our involvement actually helps with optimizing VQ matching, ventilation perfusion matching. Maybe it helps with secretion clearance. Maybe it decreases time in the hospital. Maybe it decreases time in the intensive care unit. Maybe it uh, decreases the chances of getting either a ventilator or hospital acquired pneumonia. So these are all things that are beyond function that are actually really, really important hospital and administrative outcomes. So I think if we, again, broaden our lens and look at what are all the potential patient and logistical problems that are faced when someone is in a hospital, we can better figure out where we fit and what we may be able to contribute to a specific patient case or a specific diagnosis. So I think I'll leave you with that to ponder today. Thank you for listening. It was good to see you. Have a great day.